I see on some of my uh, social media platforms that the, my uh, blogging about Maria Valtorta has caused a lot of questions uh, and you know uh, debates and so forth which is very good it's interesting to see how this work has been received in the different worlds in the french world if you look at the videos you have millions of views it's very well elaborated out in the french world in the italian world or spanish world. in the english speaking world it seems to have not received as much uh, prominence as in other places and that's why I am fascinated by the scientific studies by the linguistic studies by all of the different studies on this work right uh, somebody mentioned that uh, about the Dominicans uh, in France the Avrilé Dominicans and that they had put their advice out not to read this work it's interesting that Archbishop Lefebvre on the poem, of the he never completely banned it and said no, it's completely false. He was, you know, it was interesting. Just, just curious because I do know that that there are many SSPX mass going Catholics that do read this work, which I find interesting. So it kind of the it has caused uh, some debate across the church. But anyway, just to on the Dominicans, I thought I'd reply to something here. Um, about you know the fact that Maria Valtorta died as somebody says she she died insane all right um anyway i'm just going to read you something out here world renowned mariologist uh, father gabriel ruschini a pre vatican II consultant to the holy office and the sacred congregation of the cause of the saints wrote on wrote on maria valtorta's death in 1961 as follows the rector of the third order of the servants of mary father innocenzo rovetti assisted her at her deathbed at the moment the priest recited the words pro vicere anima christiana de hoc mundo depart o christian soul from this world maria breathed her last Ten years after Maria Valtorta's death in on the 12th of October 1971, her mortal remains were exhumed from the earth and placed in the family niche. On the 2nd of July 1973, however, with civil and ecclesiastic permissions, she was transferred from Via Reggio to, the Flor to Florence to be entombed in the Capitular Chapel of the Grand Cloister of the Basilica of the Most Holy Annunciation, the Mother Church of the Servite Order, where the tomb of Maria Valtorta is still venerated. You know, she's not buried in any old place. Ruschini also noted that after her death, people noticed that her right hand, with which she had written so many sublime texts, contra contrary to her left hand, retained the colour, suppleness and beauty of someone alive rather than dead. Valtorta was noted to have suffered from Al Alzheimer's in her later years. It is interesting to note that after Valtorta lost her mental faculties due to this disease, Marta Docetti, uh, the woman who had taken care of her for, for years after she was rendered lame by an attack from a deranged person almost three decades earlier, discovered Mar Valtorta's letter addressed to Mother, to Mother Teresa saying she had offered her intelligence to God as the last thing she could offer him as a victim soul. Because Maria wrote so much details about episodes of the New Testament, which she was privileged to see, hear, feel, smell and even touch, scientists of all fields with ample opportunities to study her credibility, geographers, botanists, biologists, climatologists, historians, biblical experts, etc., examined her narratives for eras and places and times, etc., she had witnessed. Her limbs already paralysed lay in a bed in her home. All were scientifically accurate as much as possible for somebody describing what she saw. Quite importantly in Valtorta's works are comments from Jesus himself to explain, clarify the scenes she was allowed to witness. This part of her work made clear to me why a detailed version of the New Testament had to be given in our times times so troubled 
Anyway, I just thought it was interesting. People, you know, they're trying to character assassinate the woman. Oh, no, she's she couldn't have done this. Not possible. She's insane. Look the way she died. She, you know, she's insane. She invented it. She had, you know. I, I th of course, all this discussion is good. You know, we should question, you know, test everything. But prophetic the prophetic element of the church in which the holy spirit speaks in the church at different times is part of the doct of our faith private revelation is part of our faith if our lord wants to reveal particular details as he revealed to other saints in the church he can do so for various reasons um i i i find it interesting just on this this thing about her being having Alzheimer's. I remember m with my own father, he had a fall in uh, before he died, a few years before he died. And after the fall, his character completely changed. So, you know, his the way he acted became completely different personality. And we remember talking to the doctors and said, well, look, this fall, this hemorrhage, brain hemorrhage or whatever had happened to him, you know, completely changed his personality. And oftentimes when we're looking at the lives of the saints, you know, there is this strange thing that we do is we we, we, we try to create them as, as these superhuman beings, you know, superhuman beings. No, saints are superhuman. They are different to us. We, you know, there are the saints and there are us ordinary plebs and there's the them and there's the us. And we forget the reality that Christ dealt with the humanness, with our humanness. And that's what he used to transform us. Um, and oftentimes we have this warped, very dangerous view of what it means to be a saint. Now, I had this as a, as a young man, because I remember as a young man, as we're, you're learning the faith, you're, you're trying to understand the faith, you're reading about the faith, you're reading about the lives of the saints. And certain people in the church, they would hold them, you would look at them and say, oh, this man is so holy. How can I ever be holy like that? I remember as a seminarian thinking, oh, Father Marcial is so holy. How could I ever be holy like that? You know, he's so perfect. His his great uncle is, is a saint, a canonized saint, which is true. He, in his family, there were, there were saints. And I, and you look at certain priests and religious and you say, oh, these are so holy. I'm not, I'm not able for that. I'm not, uh, you know, capable of reaching those heights, of being these great theologians, of writing all these books. And we hold sanctity up there, right, really at the top. It's like, it's like this super endurance uh, uh, athlete activity. It's only for the best of us and the the, the most capable of. It's like a, it's like climbing the Mount Everest type activity. Yeah, yeah, those are the saints that have done the up the Mount Everest type of activity. And you know everybody can do it, but not everybody gets up there. You know, and it can be demotivating. You can say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just not. You, you, you can the spirit of of re dejection, rejection. It's just oh, this is not for me. You know, uh, depression and can set in, and we forget. Yes, uh, the the spiritual life is a call to the summit, like Mount Everest. But we have a very unique. Uh, opportunity here when, when it comes to reaching that summit. We have somebody with, that will actually help us to get there, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, because our, by our own strengths, we will never get up there. But our Lord says, don't worry, I'm here, I'll help you, I'll walk with you. I am the way, the truth and the life. And so, yes, it's it's a summit. It's, it's, it's not easy sometimes, but this is where we do the possible and our Lord does the impossible. And this is the great thing about the works of Maria Valtorta. And she's opening a world to us or our Lord is opening a world to us. It says, look, I used the most ordinary men and I dealt with the ordinary situations in life. This, these same situations that you're dealing with, I dealt with those and I created saints out of those people, those men and women, his male disciples and his female disciples. I reached into the ordinary and I created extraordinary out of them and transformed the world from there. And that's what you find in the, in the writings of Maria Valtorta. So badly needed because so many people have a warped, wrong understanding of who Christ was, what he did and how he interacted with the people around us. 
You know, he calls the ordinary men and women of th- that, that, that time. You know, Peter was a fisherman. You know, and there's there's great scenes in it, you know, where, for example, Peter's wife, she can't believe the change that has happened in Peter since she's be, since he's become Christ's disciple, since his apostle. Can you imagine the fisherman going out, going out to fish and coming home and talking about fishing stuff or maybe not talking at all? You know, the typical men thing, you know, uh, you know, the, the mundane. Uh, yeah, I went out to fish and I got a few fish and I uh, mended the nets and the boat is this and I met such and such and so forth. You know, the, the ordinary mundane life of, of what St. Peter was like. And all of a sudden Christ steps into his life as the Messiah. And Peter sees what he sees. And he comes home and he tells his wife, well, you never guess what I saw. I've met. This. And he did this type of miracle and he did that type of miracle. And and then Peter is bringing other people into his house. You couldn't believe what I've seen, what I've done. This is what Christ did. He transformed the lives of those apostles, those saints. And you see it written out along the, the poem of the man God. The gospel has revealed to me. Why? For this time. Because we do not believe. The church does not believe. We don't believe that we that you can actually be a saint. You do, they do not believe in Christ's message today in the church. It has been so crystallised and collapsed and destroyed. That it has been tucked away so far. Who would give their life? Who would give their life for the image of Christ that we have created? You know... He is either raised so, so, so far up. You know, the, the writer Valentin Tomberg, he, he talks specifically about that, about what people do. They, they try to plagiarise this concept of who Christ is and what he did. Of course, you read the New Testament, the, the Gospels, you're going to arrive to what you're going to arrive in with Maria Valtorta. But do people take the effort to actually teach people sacred scripture teach people of who Christ is do we take the time you know if the the writings of Maria Faltorta had heresy that went against the faith and morals of the church the church would have been quick to shut this down a long time ago and to ban bishops giving their approvals and Nikola Opstad to allow these books to be translated and printed in different languages for example bishops in india have given their imprimatur for the, these books to have been printed so the church has not said no these books cannot be read they cannot be printed and you cannot give their approvals and you cannot blog and talk about them because there's there's over what two thousand different youtube channels talking about maria Valtorta, with many priests and many bishops promoting her works There's a reason for these works for our time and the reason is in the works and you should read them. You should read them. You should see this is the great, the great uh, beauty of our works. Christ takes the ordinary man and woman and he changes them. He transforms them. He gives them his gifts, his hope. And we are so in need of this in this world. So many people are lost without the beauty of what the gospel is so many people and you know the, her detractors they, they don't they don't have answers to for oh no she died in saying oh no there's this thing did you read that did you read this did you read the um, the people that criticize maria valtorta's works have not read her works they have not read her works you see them quoting from other sources well, yeah and i don't like maria Valtorta. well did you read this did you read? and you ask them did you read the works no i haven't read them so if you haven't read them and you haven't read the likes of father gabriel allegri or father uh, father gabriel ruschini and the others that st- studied all of her works you know all of her works and you have how can you have an opinion on her works uh, I do think it's interesting. I think I think it's a fascinating conversation. But I do challenge people: read the writings of Mar- of Maria Valtorta, the poem of the Man God, or this, the Gospel as revealed to me. I mean, they've created a fictional Christ in the Chosen, and everybody you know, promotes it and raves about it, and looks at it as completely fictional. 
the, what's it based on? You know, there's a whole episode in The Chosen of Our Lord carving little figures and uh, little toys and stuff and children playing with it. I'm not saying he didn't do it. But if you're going to read, look at The Chosen, why not read the poem of the man God? It is truly a gift for our time. A time when we humanity has never be, before had so much access to sacred scripture. There has never before been so many Bibles in the history of humanity printed. Do you get me? There's never been a, a time in the history of humanity where we've had so much access to sacred scripture so easily, so freely available on every mobile phone in this world. And yet, what do people do? More people look at porn than read sacred scripture in the world today. Instead of using what we could, the, what more people are caught up in vice than actually trying to f grow virtue. Do do you, do do people understand when when Christ said, you know, he, he gives the reasons why he give he's giving it because we're 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 going into the oblivion. You know, wars, hatred, division, in the church. And and at this time. He's giving you this gift. Read. <laughs> and he's given this great treasure of facts that you can verify. You can go in. You know, it's not just a complete fabrication. The, the Catholic version of the Book of Mormon, which was just invented by one guy, which has no historical anything to verify it at all you know christ appeared in the americas and he did this and that and the other and then it got hidden and like, complete fabrication a complete you know com the poem of the man god is totally different you know it is one of the greatest works of the greatest mystics of our time and our lord gave it to us for a reason read it god bless you take care bye bye